Section 20, idle speed controls. This is a big chapter. I heard one of you say this is a, this is a big chapter. It is, and it's an important one. Idle speed controls is a difficult subject because over the years they've changed how they control idle speed. So in this design, our idle speed is controlled by a bypass around the throttle plate. Along with this bypass, this is important, pay attention to this, you're going to see a lot of vehicles that have issues here. Along with this air flowing past the throttle or around the throttle plate, there is a small amount of air that passes past the throttle plate itself. And this air that moves past the closed throttle plate would be called minimum airflow or minimum idle speed. Probably need to remember that for an ASC test too. What is minimum idle speed? Minimum idle speed would be the idle speed of that vehicle with the air bypass passage blocked off. So if this was blocked off completely, we would have no airflow around here. The valve would be seated all the way. The only airflow entering the engine would be past the closed throttle plate. That would be your minimum idle. And it's generally around 400 to 500 RPM. Somewhere in that range is where minimum idle speed is. So this is in memory. Let's say a factory default. That'd be a normal IAC position to achieve, say, an RPM of 700 on this GM. We're in park. Over time, as this carbon deposits develop here, the computer has to open the valve more to achieve the same RPM. So now with a dirty throttle plate, we might be at 49 steps out or 49 counts open to achieve the same idle speed. On this vehicle, we now have a learned new position. 49 is the new learned number. It's like fuel trim. Fuel trim should be at zero, but with a vacuum leak, the new fuel trim number is 20%. That's a learned number. You start the car, where does the computer start the ratio? It starts it at 20%. On this car, where does it start the IC position? At 49. Well, startup, it's higher, but once we're stable, hot engine, again, same conditions, we're at 49. What happens, or let's say this, why does a car have a stalling problem when you disconnect the battery? This one's pretty much dead. You won't see too many of these anymore, but it's the same concept as our electronic throttle control systems, our ETC systems. Inside of it, right here's your DC motor. You have a positive and a negative brush. If I want the throttle plate to open, what do we do? We spin the electric motor in one direction. If I want the throttle plate to close, what do we do? We spin the motor in the opposite direction. So idle speed, everything now is controlled off of this electric motor that's inside of the throttle body assembly. What's missing here is an idle air control device. It's gone. We don't need an idle air control device. A computer controls the idle speed using this device. Dirty throttle plate, clean throttle plate. This car has a stalling problem, is a symptom with this. Okay, the first discrepancy, if you want to call it, would be a system like this where the computer has complete control of the throttle plate. You guys understand that this throttle plate you're looking at in this picture, the computer's able to control in every position from zero to 100% throttle opening. The computer can move this valve. Here's the discrepancy. If that's the case, how can dirty throttle plates, you can see this black ring that's in here, how can dirty throttle plates cause a stalling problem when the computer has complete control of this device? Down here, with all of my accessory loads on, I got everything turned on, AC, blower on high, rear window defogger, headlights, high beams, dropped it in gear still pretty close to where I need to be and I'm at 25% to achieve that RPM with all the accessory loads on this one really shows it 14% so now 
why do we develop a stalling problem? If we need all of our movement of our throttle plate, look at this picture, we're pretty much using it all. If we need all of the allowable idle load compensation range just to keep the car idling with no accessory loads, what happens when you turn an accessory load on? What does the car do? It stalls. Even on a drive-by-wire system that the computer's controlling all the time, the car has the potential to stall. Start stall, stalls it stops, stalls when you turn the AC on. These are all symptoms of dirty throttle plate conditions or idle air control conditions. Here's a sure way to tell that this is where you need to be. You question the customer and you ask them their symptoms and of course they're describing stalling problems to you. Your next question to them is, can you keep it running if you keep your foot on the throttle, on the gas pedal? Can you keep the car from stalling if you come to a light and keep one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake? If they say yes, then you're probably in an idle air control type situation. If they say no, that it doesn't matter what I do with the throttle, the car still stalls, you are not dealing with an idle air control problem. We can have idle speed control trouble codes associated with this too. What does the parts changer do that reads trouble codes? The parts changer is going to replace the idle air control motor. When he has an idle air control motor trouble code, he replaces the idle air control motor. What the trouble code is indicating is the range of the idle air control valve. The computer doesn't like it. This one here, you got to be careful with that. You never want to adjust the base idle screw on one of these throttle bodies. You're changing that minimum throttle angle. Don't touch that screw. It's factory set. You should never have to touch the screw. If you have an idle problem, in fact, this video is perfect for that. This 2003 Mercury pointed out right here had an idle speed condition that was created by a technician turning the screw. Watch this video. In fact, we should probably do that right now. Watch this video on this minimum idle. We're going to do that. I want to stop that right there for one second. And what I want you guys to understand here is on a Ford, and we'll talk more about these coming up, but we have a range of around, get a different color, we have a range of around 20% to 50%, somewhere in that range is your full range for idle loads. 20% on a Ford is fully closed. And when, when we went into this job, what we had on the scan tool was we had around 20%, which means the computer's command is to close the IAC valve. Our RPM was too high, and the computer is issuing the lowest command that it can to, to lower the RPM. That's what sets the trouble code. So a range performance code was because we can't lower the idle speed anymore. When you adjust this screw, you are changing the minimum airflow. And if you change that minimum airflow, if you increase it too much, basically the computer reacts the same way as it would with a vacuum leak and it's going to close the idle air control valve to try to bring the RPM back down. That's what happened with this vehicle. So you never adjust that screw. If you have a vehicle, let's say, that's running normally, let's say we're at 700 RPM and it's taken 30% IAC position to achieve that 700 RPM, what happens if you want your idle speed to be, say, 800 RPM? I don't know, for whatever reason. You want your idle speed to be higher. You grab this screw and you turn it and you increase the throttle plate angle, you will raise the RPM. The RPM will go up to 800 RPM. But the computer has a desired, D-E-S-I-D-L is a typical scan data PID that stands for desired idle. The computer's desired idle is still, the computer's desired idle is still 700. You just changed it to 800. What's the computer's reaction of the idle air control motor going to be? If we're now at 800 and the desired is 700, is it going to close it or open it? 
it's going to close it. So the next thing that's going to happen, this is going to drop maybe down to 20%, and now we're back to 700 again. You get frustrated, so what do you do? You crank it up some more. So you increase the thread distance some more, and now we go back to 800. The computer still has a desired of 700, and it can't lower it anymore on a Ford. 20% is the lowest you'll see. So now what do we get? In memory, we get an idle speed control error or idle control error or trouble code where the parts changer is going to want to do what? It's going to want to change the idle air control valve and you're not going to fix it. Somebody misadjusted the throttle stop screw. Don't touch the screw. When you touch the screw, you're changing your minimum idle. You're changing the position where that valve is going to ride. The only time you would ever mess with that screw is if somebody else incorrectly adjusted it and that's what happened with this car the owner of the vehicle tried to adjust his idle speed and he did and brought it to a shop and the shop saw an idle air control trouble code what the shop did replace the idle air control motor and then now they still continue to get this idle air control trouble code and they brought the car to us what was the underlying problem was it probably had a faulty idle air control valve Initial. That's why the customer adjusted the throttle stop screw to get it to idle right. Brought it to the garage because it still wasn't qu quite right, and the garage changed the idle air control valve, which probably needed to be changed, but now we got to put the throttle back where it needs to go. And this is how we're doing it. You close off the valve, and on Fords, on this design, you unplug it, which seats the valve, adjust your minimum idle. That's what we're doing. This is why you don't want to mess with the screw. Now we'll talk more about these percentage numbers and what they mean coming up, but for this video the emphasis here was what happens when minimum idle speed is incorrect or when someone adjusts that screw that was the primary focus with this. Movement of the valve is based on the pulses of the electromagnet and when these are shut down and there's no pulses occurring this holds its position. So when you unplug a stepper motor, it stays in the position it was in. Where a solenoid type is coil of wire, two pins, an offset iron core, spring loaded, generally in the closed position, and it's the magnetic field that opens the pintle. So when you unplug the magnetic field or you unplug the connector, we unplug the electrical part to that, the valve closes because it's spring-loaded. So they're different in construction. Wouldn't you think that with this 1800 RPM idle speed that the computer should be dropping or lowering this number? That's what I would think. If it's desired idle, as you can see in this picture, is 900, why is the computer not lowering the idle air control valve? Another question would be, can the computer close the valve more than where it is right now? Being closed, that spring is holding that valve closed. What we can do is we can put an offset iron core inside of a magnetic field, and we can pull that iron core into the magnetic field. That's what a solenoid is, an offset iron core in an electromagnetic field. When we turn this magnetic field on, we open the valve. When we turn the magnetic field off, we close the valve. So this valve has two positions, right? It has 0%, which would be closed, and it has 100%, which would be open. That isn't how idle speed works. We need a variable percentage, don't we? So what if we could vary the magnetic field? Would that change the position, if we could vary this magnetic field strength, can we change the position at which this pintle sits and hold it there? And that's what we're doing with a duty cycle controlled device. When we're looking at duty cycle, that percentage we're looking at on the scantle, these numbers, what you're looking at is the percentage of command of the pulsing to weaken or strengthen the magnetic field. And that magnetic field is opposing spring pressure. Spring pressure is holding it closed. Magnetic field strength is opening it up. The stronger the field, 
the more we open the valve. We can hold it in every position between 0 and 100% opening with two wires with a pulsed on-off signal. This looks a lot like an output solenoid, doesn't it? Does this look like section 3? Yeah. Power side, fed, ground side switched? It's exactly what we're looking at. Where am I taking the measurement on the blue trace? I'm looking at it right here on the control wire with the voltmeter. What am I seeing? I'm seeing a transistor that is, op that is opening and closing or turning on and off this solenoid 1,400 times per second. It's pretty fast, isn't it? My red trace would be just me grabbing this side with the voltmeter just to show you that it is in fact battery fed. Right there is your voltage from the battery. Ground side switched is the blue trace. So if it's ground side switched with the voltage high, are we on or are we off up here? And are we on or are we off down here it would be the first question on this design. If it's ground side switched, where is my on time? caused by collapses of magnetic fields, current flows causing the voltage spike. So I'm just giving you a little bit of insight on troubleshooting this. And I, I really didn't expect to have this opportunity to talk about this. I used this picture to help this guy. Now let me show you what his looked like. Back to this. What we had was Okay, his four channels look like this. When I, when I saw his capture, well, first of all, he had an idle speed issue. I think it was a real high idle speed that wouldn't come down, or it was a real low idle speed that wouldn't come up. There was no control of this valve. So to review again, does it take all four coils making the correct, does it take both coils with the correct polarity to make this thing move? Yes. So it takes all four channels to function properly for that to happen. Okay, This is what I saw in his waveform. And notice that this one is low the same time that the opposite side is high. Can you see that? And then in the top picture, what we see is a low and a low at the same time. So that jumped out at me right away. I knew all of these four wire stepper designs should have opposites of each other. Do you see how we have three channels that are the same? Can you see it? His question was why? Is it a computer? Is it the valve? Is it a coil? And I think it had a new valve put in it. Here's the test I told him to do. See if this makes sense. I told him to unplug the IAC and retake this capture. With this driver being faulty right here. Do you understand that what he would have seen unplugged is this one is now going to disappear unplugged and that we have three channels now that are showing me a waveform with that top driver being faulty. I have a P0505 code and I have no IAC flare up on startup. No flare up means the valve's not functional. Start the car, it sits at 500 RPM the whole time. No flare. Customer states this was not there before the accident. So what's my concern? What would your concern be? You go to a body shop, do a job, and the customer says this idle problem and code were not there before the accident.